In this video, we're gonna take a look at a pink ink by Sailor, a part of their Kobe line, their number 30. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also down in the description is a link to the pink ink playlist, so if you wanted to see more of them, you can find that there. I'm an ink guy, let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Claire Fontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting, we get no feather, no spread, we do get little spots of shading that occur in the stub and in the extra fine and medium. It's got just a little hint of shading throughout. Now the extra fine and the medium are the same tone, both just a little bit lighter than the stub. The extra fine took seven seconds to dry while the medium took 12. Scrubby for both show a little color variation and there is little spots of color in the writing. And the smear test, I think you could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Twisby Mini with a fine nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM, Tomoe River. No bleeding, no ghosting. We get no feather, no spread, no shading at all. The stub and medium are the same tone, and the extra fine is just a little bit lighter than those. Now, the extra fine took 14 seconds to dry while the medium took 19. The scrubby for both show no color variation, and there isn't any shading in the writing. And the smear test, you probably could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Impressive. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see a very nice flat pink that's moving up and it's moving away from the water, but all the way across the top is a very bright yellow. The one on the right that's let dry for 10 minutes, it looks exactly the same. It really means we don't expect any resistance from this ink. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia Dot Pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. We get no feather, no spread, no shading in the stub, no shading in the medium, but just a couple of darker spots that occur in the extra fine. Now the extra fine is a little bit lighter than the medium and the stub is just a little bit darker than the medium. Extra fine took nine seconds to dry while the medium took 13. Scrubby of the extra fine shows some color variation, the medium not so much, which is basically what happened in the writing. And the smear test you could probably recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink could be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it handles itself incredibly well. I really do feel very safe using this in a note-taking situation, because there's no loss of information there. Now, water is lifting all the darkest tones. It's leaving a bunch of that pink there, which I was a bit surprised by. It didn't leave the pink in the pen though. It only took water to clean this out of the pen. Pen flush does more than water, quite a bit more. It's really completely removing it. So the one third bleach solution that completely removes it, you're definitely not gonna need it. The next writing sample is done on yellow Rhodia paper. We do this not to see any kind of performance change, but really to see tone change that would occur for the yellow backdrop. And this is very much having to do with the yellow that was showing up in the chromatography. I was curious how that would affect this color. And the truth is, it doesn't. There's no effect whatsoever in the tone from one to the other. So in that, this is a very opaque ink. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Sailor Kobe number 30 has a viscosity of 2.38, so it's normal. The next writing sample is done on life paper. No bleed, no ghost. No feather, no spread, no shade. Just tone variation. When we look at this, we see the extra fine is much lighter than the stub or medium that are the same tone. Now the extra fine took seven seconds to dry and the medium took 12. Scrubby for both are not really showing any color variation, but we don't get it in the writing. And the smear test you could probably recover if you smeared while you were writing. 
For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Sailor Kobe number 13 has an average dry time of 12 seconds, making it just a little bit faster than normal. The last writing sample is done on Levenger paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. We get no feather, no spread, no shading for the stub, no shading for the extra fine, but the medium definitely shows some lighter and darker spaces. So like brown goes darker to lighter. It's, it's actually looks much better in the medium than any of the others here. The extra fine is the lightest tone on the page with the stub being a bit darker than that and the medium being a little darker than the stub. The extra fine took five seconds to dry and the medium took eight. The scrubby of the extra fine shows a tiny bit of color variation. The medium shows none. We really didn't get it so much in the extra fine. We got it better, I think, in the medium. The smear test says you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Sailor Kobe number 30, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I decided to go with a nice blue, which is also from Sailor, their Ultramarine. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those playlists. So what do I think of Sailor Kobe number 30? Very simply, a good pink here. It's easy to read and is very nice on the page. So what nib and pen are going to give the best writing experience with this ink? It always looks good, even with its tone variation you can get with different pens. So I would really just call this one a dealer's choice. I never saw it too light to comfortably read, so even your dry pens should be fine. I hope you got something out of this video, and in the next video we're going to take a look at Sailor Kobe number 8.